this morning. I don't have enough time. I don't know how to, con- I don't, I battle with it in my mind in the office this morning. And, and to condense this down, that to, to get y'all out of here. Oh, it ain't too bad. It's just 9.30 and all y'all got here early. God is good. <laughs> They'll have that changed by the night, I promise you. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> years ago, I was, I, I, was preaching, I was preaching for Brother Tommy Jackson years ago on a Sunday morning. And, and so I really didn't, you know, when you're visiting somewhere preaching, you don't really know how their deal is. But I thought I would, I was preaching, really I'd run out, of, I'd run out, you know. So I, I went from preaching really into rambling. I was, I was waiting for the Sunday school class to come in. Does anybody know Sister Jackson? She's very comical. Well, she picked up on that. And she said, Brother Epper, they're not coming in. I said, well, then I'm turning this service to Brother Jackson. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So she figured I was going to ramble till they come in to be there all day. So I'm going to try to, I got a pretty good foundation. And then, then I got a pretty good house to put on. All right. So, uh, and really, I need to do it all in one setting, or you'll, or you'll lose out on it. So I guess I better start. 9.30 and ticking. I need a couple hours to preach to old, old Hunter and Skyler. They're here. Amen. I ought to get them chairs and set them right up here. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just teasing these ugly boys. Amen. Galatians chapter 3. I had to have somewhere to start. Used to know a preacher up in Indiana years ago. He'd just read anywhere. He said, I had something to say, and you just need a scripture to go with it. So he just read anywhere. He said, that's a good place to start. (laughs) And uh, in the third chapter of Galatians, Galatians chapter 3, one verse, verse 13. I have so many verses and stuff in my foundation. But if the Lord, if the Lord will help us. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on the tree. Will you pray with me? God, we're so thankful for your goodness and your kindness and your love and your mercy. Oh, Jesus, speak to our hearts today. Help me, Lord, to be a blessing to your people. Dear God, in Jesus' name. Oh, we love you, Lord. We appreciate you. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to run through several scriptures that I'm going to take time maybe to to quote them more than I am to read them while Brother Andy gets up here closer. Uh, I've got a setting I'm going to. Galatians 4 and 4 through 6. So when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son made of a woman. Now, listen. To understand the sonship is very simple. In the fullness of time, everybody say time. Time. Son. Time. Time. Son. Time. Son. Time. Son. The son comes in time. Right. He comes in time. And then he continues in the role of son until time is finished. 
It said, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son made of a woman to redeem. To redeem. That is the, that is the purpose, to redeem. To redeem. God sent forth his son to redeem. Can you say redeem? Redeem. The last work of redemption. The last work of redemption is to judge those who rejected redemption. So that's the last work of the Son. That's the last work that he does. The Bible said, The Father hath committed all judgment unto the Son. That's why the 15th chapter of the book of Corinthians said, Then come of the end, when the Son will deliver up everything, and, and, and he, he, the role of the Son is finished. That, that technically takes place in the 20th chapter of Revelations in your Bible, at the white throne judgment. And when he finishes doing the judgment there, then he'll no longer be acting in the role of son. No longer will be acting in that role of son because the sonship is for the a purpose of redemption. He, come, he is born to redeem. Yes. He dies to redeem. We're living in the dispensation of redemption. Yes. Then at the end of the thousand years, uh, then he judges those that have not accepted his redemption. Then that is the end of that. Now that's not the lesson, but that, that, that'll give you a little, a, little, a little food for thought. But the son is sent to redeem. Titus 2 and 14 talks about that he come to redeem his people from all iniquity. 1 Peter 1 18 said we're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold after the tradition of our fathers, but we're, but we're redeemed by the precious blood Glory. of the Lamb, yes. who was verily foreordained before the world began. I'm glad God had a plan before he had a man. All right. yes. Well, glory to God. Yes. Amen. He had, a, he had a Savior in plan before there was a sin. Yes. Amen. He was a Savior before there was a sin. He was a healer before there was a sickness. He was a comforter before there was any sorrow. He was an answer before there was any problem. Really, he was the end before it was the beginning. And when you get to the ending, he'll be the beginning. Glory to God. Amen. He, he, he had a plan. Ain't you glad nothing caught God by surprise? Come on, Elder. Goodness sakes alive. When he was asking Adam, where art thou? He wasn't asking that. For any time you find a question God asks in the Bible, he's not asking for his information. He's asking for a response from you. He knew where Adam and Eve, he, he knew what Adam and Eve had done. And he come, he come, if you'll notice when Adam and Eve sinned, they weren't looking for God. They were hiding from God. It was God that came looking for them. Yes. Yes. I'm glad he came looking for me. Amen. In Romans 5 and 9, I just re-listened to this message again where Brother Hus preached on singing the song that got us here. It said, by thy blood has thou redeemed us out of every kindred, nation, tongue, and people. Revelation 3. 24 through 25 talks about we have redemption through his blood, even the perpetuation for our sins. Ephesians 1 and 7 and Colossians 1 and 14 said, in whom we have redemption, even the forgiveness of sin. The word redemption literally means to be bought with a price. You're in a slave market and somebody buys you out of it. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20 says, uh, you're not your own, you're bought with a price. That's redemption. Acts 20, 28 says, talks about the church of God, which was purchased with his own blood. Then the 13th chapter of the book of Exodus, I'm running through these because I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving somewhere. 
but I'm laying a foundation. And we're going to see how, how we're going to be looking at Calvary. Calvary, when you look at the law without Calvary, they didn't, they didn't understand why or what was going on. They were just doing it because it was commanded by God. They didn't have any idea of the pictures it was portraying. But brother Johnny, when we look back at those, we look back through Calvary. And Calvary is like a prism. Not a prison, but a prism. P-R-I-S-M. A prism where you shine a light through this prism kind of like a diamond or something. And when you do, you see all the various shades of light. You can't see it, but when the light hits it, then you see all the various shades and colors that it is. Well, that's how the law is. When you look back through Calvary, then it's not just some priest standing there, or some sacrifice, or some piece of furniture in the tabernacle, or some allegory or some story in the Old Testament. When you, go, when you look back through Calvary, it paints the picture of, 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 really, of redemption. Everything is hinged on redemption. In Exodus 13, 12 and 13, it talks about uh, redemption by a substitute. Are you there, Brother Andy? Yes, sir. I, I, I want to, this is one of the few that I, that I want to read. Go ahead there. Now thou shalt set apart unto the Lord yes. all that openeth the matrix. Yes. And every firstling that cometh of a beast yes. thou hast. Yes. The male shall be the Lord's. Yes. And every firstling of an ass. Every shalt, firstling of an ass. Thou shalt redeem with a lamb. Hallelujah. Here in the book of Exodus, God teaches us a lesson. There is going to be a substitute. Man, you're doing good, Brother Caleb. Well, good, wonderful. Now, in this picture, Brother Caleb, in this picture, you're not the lamb. Is everybody here getting this picture? You ain't the lamb in the picture. There's only one other creature in there, and that's you. <coughs> Amen. But here, way back here, God gives us a lesson of a substitute. Of a substitute. You know, an, an ass is, is stubborn, yes. hard-headed, bull-headed, got a mind of its own not very willing, not very submissive. Well, if that ain't a picture of us, not very yielding. You know, uh, Missouri's got a... Uh, it, it's got a slogan. It's called the what state? Show me, Show me state. Hey, like standing, looking at a mule. Praise God. And that's kind of the nature of... I don't... That ain't just Missouri, folks. That, that, that pretty well is everybody everywhere. And, but there's going to be a substitute. And you redeem that ass with the life of a lamb. Yes. With the life of a lamb. Now, them folks were doing that back there, brother. And then they wouldn't get no picture. They, you know, that ass, it probably didn't make any sense to them. That ass was allowed to live while that lamb died. And the ass may have been more valuable to them than the yes, lamb would have been. Said, so, you know, why would a, 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 a lamb die and, 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 and an ass go free? Praise God. Mm. And they've done that for hundreds of years. Yes, sir. Not understanding. An, a, an ass got to live because a lamb died. Yes. Well, I'm glad there was a lamb that died. Yes, amen. That took my place that I could go free. Hallelujah, God. Then, 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 in Leviticus 25 and 25, and then verse 49, then I'm going to the 
to the body of my lesson today. If the Lord, if the Lord will help me. In the New Testament, you'll notice, I think you have the word atonement. Maybe found once in Romans 5. And you have reconciliation a few times. Well, that's 20, 25, 25, I think. Let me make sure I didn't write something down wrong. Yeah. And uh, 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 reconciliation. But the main word used in the New Testament to describe what Jesus done for us is to redeem us. Well, the word redemption is kind of archaic to us. The closest thing that you and I would use the word redemption for would be uh, anybody ever hawk anything at a pawn shop? But if you hawk anything at a pawn shop, they give you a little ticket, and and you are able to go when you get the money, you're able to go back and redeem that that you hawked into the pawn shop. Well, our first father and our first mother, Adam and Eve, hawked us into the pawn shop, Amen. and wasn't nobody able to pay the price. Man, when old Moses got through reading the law, you know what? Everybody was still in the pawn shop. When old Abraham walked before God and got through with his journey, you know what? Everybody was still in the pawn shop. When old Jacob got through wrestling with the Lord, mankind was still in the pawn shop. When all them priests, starting all the way from Aaron, all the way to Caiaphas, when they all got through with all of their ceremonies, Mankind was still in the pawn shop. When the kings come up, all the way from Saul to uh, Zedekiah that they punched his eyes out and let him off into Babylon. When they got through, everybody's still in the pawn shop. David got through singing. Everybody's in the pawn shop. Because there was nobody that was able to, that had the currency to buy you out of the pawn shop. That's why we needed a redeemer. You had to have a redeemer. Where are you there in Leviticus? What? 25, 25, then 49. If yeah. thy brother be waxing poor, yes, and hath sold away some of his possession, yes, yes, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, yes, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. Yes. Verse 49. Either his uncle yes. or his uncle's son yes. may redeem him. Yes, yes. Or any that is nigh of kin unto him yes. of his family may redeem him. Okay. Or if he be able, he may redeem himself. Well, we wasn't able. Now, why won't you turn your Bibles to the book of Ruth? Yeah. My lesson this morning is going to be on the romance of redemption. The romance of redemption. I don't think there's a more beautiful picture on redemption in your Bible than the book of Ruth. You know, there's only two books in the Bible that are named after women. We really don't know who wrote either one of them. We don't know who wrote Ruth. Now, if you go look at it when you get home, you'll have all kinds of opinions. And uh, uh, we really don't know. All, all they can give you is an educated guess. And then uh, the book of Esther. We don't really know who wrote the book of Esther. But both of these are very pivotal books in the Bible. And as, as God would have it, both of them feature a woman as the primary person of interest that is in the book. Really, the book of Ruth has two women, and the book of Esther has one. And one of these days, I'll, I'll teach you a class on the book of Esther and what she means to us 
here and now. Well, this story goes like this. Let me just kind of get this first chapter out of the way. There was a man in Bethlehem of Judah whose name was Elamech. His name means God is my king. That was his name literally means. And he's dwelling in Bethlehem of Judah. The word Bethlehem means house of bread. And Judah means praise. Where better place to be than the house of bread and praise? Amen. But there became a famine in the land. And uh, uh, he... He made his journey to Moab. The word Moab literally means nothing or wasted. He left the house of God's bread and went into the country of nothingness. That's what every backslider does. When they backslide, they leave where the bread and the praise is, and they find their way down in that howling, wasted wilderness of Moab. All right. Well, he has two sons has a wife by the name of Naomi. And I don't know why they named their sons this, but evidently it was prophetic. One of them was named Chilion, which means pining away. And the other is named Mylon, which means sickly. And so he took sickly and pining away. And his wife Naomi, which means pleasant. And they make their way to Moab. Well, as, as, as fate would have it, Elamic up and dies. I don't know how long they're there before he dies. But Elamic up and dies. And uh, uh, and Naomi's still there. She's there long enough. I don't know why she stays there, but she's there long enough that her sons get married. And they marry two women by the name of, 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 of Orpha and Ruth. And uh, they, these, uh, and the boys die. They fulfill their names. Sickly and puny kicks the bucket. And they die. And, uh, She's heard that God has visited bread back at home. I'm going to tell you what. There may be some slow times in church. Come on, Albert. I'm not going to tell you we're always going to be kicking the ceiling out because that may not be so. Sometimes there, churches have seasons, spring and summer and fall and winter. Won't you be glad when winter's over? Amen. Amen. Even folks who love the cold, I think, are tired of the winter. I mean, they're ready for the sun to shine and the flowers to bloom and something to take place. Well, churches have winters. If the weather gets cold enough, it'll kill the bugs out. Sometimes God sends the winter because you just got some bugs that's hanging around. He wants to kill the bugs out. And uh, But he heard there's bread back in the back in. Bethlehem of Judah. So she said, I'm going home. I'm going home. And she gets her two daughter-in-laws. I can see them at a juncture of a road. They're, they're all standing there, three women weeping and crying. She said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going home. I'm going home. And she said, now go and return to your mother's house. And the Lord will deal kindly with you. And she says, I grant that the Lord will send you another husband. She, she kissed them, lifted up their voice and wept, and they're all weeping. And they said, you know, we want to go with you. And she begins to reason with them. She said, you know, I have no more husband, no more sons in my womb. And if I had them one, would you want to wait around till they got old enough to get married? Said, the hand of the Lord is going against me. Go. And in verse 14, they lift up their voice and they weep again. And Ophrah kissed her mother. And law, 
Amen. Some folks are moved. Yeah, folks come to this altar from time to time, and they're moved. But they kind of give the Lord a, a kiss, and they're gone. They're gone back to their home. All of their parents are idolaters. They're going back in the way of idolatry. And you know what or or Orpha does? She walks off the pages of Scripture. You never hear from her again. She's gone. I'm going to tell you what. There's some folks, they have the opportunity. They could have been one of them that was in the field that we're going to read about later. But they walk off. And they're not recorded anymore. But the Bible said that Ruth claved to her. She clung to her. And Naomi tried to reason with her and said, You know, your, your, your sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Go after her. Boy, and this is, I think there's seven parts here. Ruth says, Entreat me not to leave thee nor to return from following after thee. Whether thou goest, I will go. Whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. And thy people shall be my people. And thy God, I'm leaving the gods of my parents. And thy God shall be my God. And where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. And the Lord do so unto me more also, if aught but death do part me in thee. And the Bible said she was steadfastly minded to go with her. My Lord. Brother, if you're going to live for God, move it, up, move it to the book of Ruth there, brother. We're going, to, we're going to be getting a lot of that there. We're in verses 16 and 17. But we're going to be, we're, we're going to be there a lot. Yes, well, though, you know. Brother, if you're going to live for God, you're going to have to make some commitments. If that, if that back there means more to you than what's up ahead, then uh, uh-huh. sooner or later you'll go back. But if you fall in love with him, Amen. said, I tell you what, I, I made my mind up. Every once in a while when you testify, you boys, let me, let me tell you, you, you boys and you young girls, let me tell you what your testimony needs to be every once in a while when we're having testimony service. Of course, it's kind of hard to get you guys to testify during testimony service. What's up with that? Come on. Well, praise the Lord, Brother Officer. You're doing good this morning. Now, you're probably going to testify tonight, ain't you? Praise the Lord. Good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but every once in a while when you testify, you need to jump up and shake your fist. Yes! All right. And make a mean face and say, My seat's not for sale. All right. Yes. All right. So I want to serve notice on the devil and hell yes. and all my relatives and kin folks and friends. My seat is not for sale. Where thou dies, I'll die. You know, uh-huh. we'll just get a, we'll just get a big plot. When you put your name on there, you put my name on there. So they went back to Bethlehem of Judah. Oh, oh, the providence of God. Glory to God. 
And they, they get back in the city. And the city's moved. I said, Look, there, there's Naomi. She said, call me not Naomi, call me Myra. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full. It's happened to every backslider. I went out full. And the Lord had brought me home against empty. But she's here in Bethlehem at the time of the barley harvest. Now here's where the story's getting ready to pick up and some of the actions getting ready to change. Amen. All right, Brother Andy, two, two and one of Ruth. Ruth two and one. And Naomi had a kinsman of... Now, we just read in the 25th chapter of the book of Exodus, yes, sir. of Deuteronomy, of Leviticus. Leviticus. Well, I was in the right part of the Bible. Hallelujah. In the 25th chapter of Leviticus, we read about this kinsman redeemer. The Hebrew word for there is a great word. It's G-O-E-L. Now, how do you pronounce that? I try to say it. We didn't have any. Would you believe we didn't have any Jews around Morton's Gap? So we didn't learn any Hebrew there. We didn't have many English folks there. Just well, That's why my English ain't very good. All we had there was Kentuckians. Amen. But that word there, G-O-E-L, means a blood kinsman. A blood kinsman. Somebody that's really, really kin to you, a blood kinsman. And, and, and uh, so here we start in the, in, the, in the second chapter of the book of Ruth. And what does verse 1 say? Now, first, all we've had, all we've had so far is calamity, judgment, death, sickly, pining away, or from our kisses and marches off, and here comes two women into the city that have nothing. They have nothing. And the city's knowing them by her old name, said, Naomi! Oh, no, no, no. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. I'm, I'm bitter. I've, I've went out full. My husband's dead. My boys are dead. And I got this Moabite woman trailing along with me. I'm, 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 I'm empty. But in the chapter 2 and verse 1, it begins to, it begins to change. What does it say? And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, mm -hmm. a mighty man of wealth, mm -hmm. of the family of Elimelech. Mm -hmm. His name was Boaz. Ah, but the story is getting ready to change. Oh, glory to God. Action's getting ready to pick up. Now the focus is not necessarily going to be on this poor, deprived widow. Or should I say, poor, deprived widows. The picture changes. And instead of the focus being on them that has nothing, right? The picture is changing to him that has everything. Yeah. And I don't think it's an accident in your Bible that he is from Bethlehem. That's where the kinsman's going to come from. He's going to come from Bethlehem. Well, he's going to be a rich man. Amen. His mama may offer up two turtle doves because they're poor in this world. But if they only knew who this baby was that was born in Bethlehem, he owned, the, he owned all the silver and all the gold and all the cattle of a thousand hills. All of it belongs to him. He is a very wealthy man. And not only is he rich in the material things of life, in mercy and he's rich in love and he's rich in grace and he's rich in redemption and he's rich in salvation he's rich 
Oh, the chat, so the story is changing from these poverty folks that have known nothing but poverty and anguish and sorrow. This man named Boaz, Boaz names literally means strength. Boaz walks on the scene here. And, 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 and the story is somewhat funny. Says, and Ruth the Moabite has said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean the ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on the field belonging to Naomi. I'm going to tell you what, a lot of haps that take place in your life, things that seem like accidents or circumstance, really is nothing but the plan of God to get you where he wants you. That's right. So, you know, she just walked around there, Brother Donnie, and, 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 and something invisible nudges her. That field right there, she's, so she's out there in that field. See, this was God's welfare plan in the, in the Bible, was that they were not to, after they made the first run to get grain, they could not make a second run. It was left in the field. For the poor. And they, and they couldn't cut the corner. They couldn't do, they couldn't knock the corners down. Because that was left for the poor. And, and uh, they would all be able to go in there and, and glean. God had a wonderful plan. That would work today, praise the Lord. Having work fair instead of welfare. Makes sense, don't it? Amen. God, God has an obligation unto us to make sure our elderly is taken care of. I mean, it's so technical in the Bible, in the New Testament. Not only was you responsible for your mom and dad, you're responsible for your aunt. Oh, yeah. Said, if any have a nephew, 1 Timothy chapter 5, let him, let him relieve her. Well, I think, well, Lord, move on. So... So here, here they're in, and she, she's gleaning in this field that belongs to another. And, 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 and uh, 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 she's picking and, and going along. And, uh, and uh, uh, they're, they're talking. And then in verse 5, Then said Boaz unto his servant, over the reapers. Whose damsel is this? I'm going to tell you, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Some folks don't believe in this. It really doesn't matter. But Boaz saw that girl one time. And his heart started beating. He fell in love. Man. Woo. And, and, and uh, he don't know who she is. And, and, and he said, man. He falls in love with this woman. And the servant began to tell him that it is a Moabitish damsel. They came back with Naomi out of Moab. He's letting him know you know, this gal, if you got your eyes set on this gal, she's a Moabitish woman. You know, he's, he's letting her know. He didn't say, well, this is a woman. This is uh, Naomi's daughter. No, 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 no. Because he doesn't see the gleam in old Boaz's eye. And he's wanting him to know, uh-uh, 
This is a Moabitish damsel. And then she comes into the picture. And she begins to talk with him. And, 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 and he begins to tell her not to go into another field, but to abide here face fast with the maidens. He said, you stay right here. And she does something that, 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 in verse 10. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said, It has fully been shown me all that thou hast done to thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband, how thou hast left thy father and mother in the land of thy nativity and are coming to the land where thou knewest not. The Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given to thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wings thou art come to trust. And then they're, 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 they're talking some more. And... Uh, she rises up to glean. And old Boaz gets them fellers aside and he said, Hey guys, you leave her alone. Don't be messing with the property. Well, praise the Lord. Say, well, I ain't got a jealous bone in my body. Then you don't have any love in your body. You can't have love without jealousy. All jealousy is not ugly. The Bible talks about a godly jealousy. Read it. It's in your Bible. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2. Well, praise the Lord. Well, if there's somebody flirting with your wife and, and you didn't give a big hoot, well, there's something you're trying to get rid of. Her. There's nothing, something wrong with you. But there's something protective. Now, there is... Wicked jealousy, where somebody just lets their imagination run away with you, and a guy can't go to the store and get a pop without his wife accusing him of flirting with the clerk. Well, praise the Lord. That's an ungodly jealousy. That, that, that'll have torment. It'll torment you home. But there is a godly jealousy that wants you to protect what is yours. Right. And, and, uh, old, uh, he said, you leave her, and I said, what you do? You just accidentally, while you're, while you're gleaning, just drop a handful. Handfuls on purpose. And that way when she, well, she'll have plenty. And she, after when the day was over, and, 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 they, and they gleaned, and uh, she brought all this home to Naomi, and... Uh, Pick it up, verse 20, brother Andy, 2 and 20. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Yes. Blessed be he of the Lord. Yes. Who hath not left off his kindness to the living. Yes. And to the dead. Yes. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin. That uh, man is a near kinsman to us. One of our next kinsmen. One of our next kinsmen. So... Man, Naomi sees, she may not understand all the plan, but Sister Triplett, she understands this. You know, this is of the Lord. Amen. And she's a woman, so she knows womanly wiles. So this girl's come, the girl comes home, her cheeks are flush. There's a smile on her face. There's a spring in her step. She's not the same Naomi that walked out is the one that came in. Am I remember any of that? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> well, glory be to God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And... Uh, she, 
she realizes that Ruth is in love. Ruth is in love. And she's telling her, look, he's our, he's one of our next of kin. And, and uh, this is good. She said, you stay right there and don't go another field. And I like this, verse 23. And she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean until the end of the barley harvest. Did you, you know what? That's, that's nearly six months. So six months. See, he's even excited. So six months. Oh, Boaz is accidentally, he's just coming by, you know, just, oh, well, I, I didn't know you was going to be here. Well, he doesn't have spies. He knows. They just accidentally bump into each other. How can you remember when the love bug bit? I mean, you couldn't hardly stand to be away. One day seemed to be a month. Now some of you are saying one day is like a month. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you're just so in love. Hallelujah. Oh, Austin, you're really into this lesson. This <laughs> Tell this lesson means more. You have taught in a while. Praise the Lord. But 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 the bug is bit and they're and they're and and they're and they're madly and something's going on. And this six months they're talking and communing. And oh, oh, oh. And the longer it goes, the worse it gets. Then in chapter 3, I won't. Let's get through verse 5. Chapter 3 through verse 5. Got to skip through here. If I don't, then 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 it'll it'll I'll uh, go too long. What does it say? Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, Yes, my daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee? Yes, that it may be well with thee. Yes, and now is not Boaz of our kindred? Yes, with whose maidens thou wast? Yes, behold. He went with Harley Barley tonight. And I've been looking out the window and I've been seeing this ain't a one-sided deal. This ain't a one-sided deal. He's in love with you too. But said this is good because he's our kinsman. Ain't you glad he loved you? We was at Moabite I, Brother Smith, I don't believe the church was an afterthought. There's some folks believe that really the church, you know, we tried Israel and Israel didn't work. And so Israel fits into this. That's what Naomi is all about here. God wants us to understand he's not forgot about Israel. Now, if you think God forgot about Israel, I'll tell you what you do. You go up and when the sun comes up, you fuss with it. And when the moon comes up, you fuss with it. Because Isaiah said, as long as the sun is up by day and the moon is up by night, I will not forget my covenant with you. God hadn't forgot Israel. And in its time, God will take care of that. But let me tell you about the church. Ephesians 1 and 4 said he has chosen us in him before the world began. That's hard to comprehend. This, this glorious body that is called the church is not an afterthought. But God, God said in eternity past, there is going to be a church that's going to be made up of kindred, nation, tongue, and people. Red, yellow, black, and white. Rich and poor. Jew and Gentile. Male and female, bond and free, educated, uneducated, thick and thin. Praise God. God's going to have a church. And what does it say? Wash thyself, therefore. Ah. Uh, now he's going to give, she's going to give her some instructions. She said, wash thyself. Brother, when, when, 
There's some things. I know the Baptists and the Presbyterians believe you don't have to do nothing. But I'm going to tell you what. If you're going to be his wife, right. there's going to be some things that you're going to have to do. Amen. And one thing is you're going to have to wash. Amen. There's water in the plant. Amen. Baptists ain't got no water in the plant. Lutherans ain't got no water in the plan. Yeah, but there's water in the plan. The Charismatics ain't got no water in the plan. But I'm telling you, if you're going to be his wife, there's going to be some water in the plan. Wash thyself. Yes? And anoint thee. Woo. Except a man be born of what? Water. Water and spirit. Water and oil. Water and oil. All the sacrifices was water and oil. You've got to. Oh, Naomi said, you know, I ain't had no use to wear this. I've had it for a long time. I used to dab it under my ear when old Elamic would come around. I ain't know I got the wrong name. Whatever the guy's name wasn't it? Was it died. Who cares? He's dead. Praise the Lord. He said, but I got this bottle, I ain't got any use to, I ain't got any use to wear it. He said, let me, let, let me dab you a little bit with some of this, some of this sweet smelling perfume. And he, and he and said, wash thyself, anoint thyself, yes. Put thy raiment upon thee. But thy, you, 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 you take that old, all he has seen you, all he has seen you in is that old widow's raiment you've been working out there. Said, you, you spiffy up a little bit. Put on some new raiment. I'm glad he provides us with new raiment that is called his righteousness. I tell you the best thing. They used to sing an old song in Kentucky. Tell you the best thing I ever did do when I took off the old robe and I put on the new. Go ahead. Get thee down to the floor. You get thee down to the threshing floor. But make not thyself known unto the The threshing man. floor was on the hills. Where they'd thresh that wheat and the wind would come and blow that chaff away and just the grain would be left on the floor. So what does it say to do? Make not thyself known unto the man. Yes. Until he shall have done eating and drinking. Yes. And it shall be, when he lieth down, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. When he lays down, you mark the place that he shall lie. Yes. And thou shalt go in. Yes. And uncover his feet. Yes, yes. And lay thee down. Yes. And he will tell thee what thou shalt do. There's not immorality going on. She's not being forward. There's no forwardness in this. This was their custom. She went in there. Come here, Caleb. Amen. Lay down. He, he's worked and he's laying down. Now the reason he's laying down, they're laying on top of their wheat to keep anybody from coming in and stealing it. So they've, they've, they've finished harvesting. They've had a good harvest. They, they've thrown a little party. And, and, and now he's, he is, he's resting. And he's got his garment on him. He said, what you do, you go in there and you lay down at his feet. I'm going to tell you. Until you learn to bow at his feet. You'll never be his wife. You got to bow at his feet. She's bowing there. And, and Brother Andy, pick that up there. Let's get some of that. She, she said unto her, and she said unto her. Yes, yes, yes. All that thou sayest unto me. All thou sayest unto me, I will do. Go ahead. She went down into the floor. Uh-huh. And did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her. Yes. 
And when Boaz had eaten and drunk, yes. and his heart was merry, yes. he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. Yes. And she came softly. Yes. And uncovered his feet. Yes. And laid her down. She uncovered his feet. And she laid down at his feet. Tell you what, saints. Tell you, get to where you can lay it. I'm submitting my will. I'm laying at your feet. I'm submitting my dreams. I'm laying at your feet. I'm submitting my desires. I'm laying them at your feet. I'm submitting all my ambition. I'm laying it at your feet. I'm submitting my ego. I'm laying at your feet, Lord. Lord, I'm just, I'm just, do to me whatever you want to do, but I'm laying at your feet. What does it say happened, brother? And it came to pass at midnight yes. that the man was afraid. Yes, something stirred him. And turned himself. Yes. And behold, a woman lay at his feet. He saw a woman laying at his feet. Yes. And he said, Who art thou? Yes. And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. I am Ruth, thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy Spread handmaid. Spread thy skirt over thy handmaid. For thou art a near kinsman. For thou art a near kinsman. Spread that skirt. She's saying, cover me. I'm uncovered. Covered me. Oh, if we'd ever see that our covering, the bed's too short and the cover's too narrow. Cover me with your blood. Cover me with your presence. Spread your garment over me. I don't want my nakedness to appear. I don't have anything to cover myself like you covered Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Cover me. Cover me with thy garment, Lord. Well, that's what repentance is all about. It's saying, God, cover me. Cover me. And what does it say? He said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter. Yes, yes. For thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. Yes, yes. Inasmuch as thou followedest not, young men, yes. whether poor or rich. Yes. And now, my daughter, fear yeah. not. Yes. I will do to thee all oh, that thou requires. Oh, hear it. I will do to thee all that requires. I'm going to tell you. That's what Calvary was all about. When he was praying for those three hours in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but thine be done. I will do. I, will, I was born for this purpose. He was born to die. I want you to know, I, I will do. I will do whatever thou requires. All right, you can get up. So he, he, she goes her way. Goes back home. He gives her six measure of barley. And she comes in and she don't look like she did when she come out. She said, who art thou? Who art thou, my daughter? Well, she knew who she was. But what he is really, what she is really saying is, something's changed. Yes. You may have left here, Ruth, the widow. But you've come back in this house tonight. You're getting ready to be Miss Boaz. That's who you are. And uh, pick up verse 18. I've got to hurry. Yes. Then, she, then said she, Yes. Sit still, my daughter. You sit still. I want to say something to the church today. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. He knows every struggle. He knows every trial. He knows every temptation. He knows every failure. He knows every weakness. You just sit still. Because he, until thou know how the matter will fall, for the man will not be in rest until he has finished the thing this day. He's going to finish it. He's not going to start it and leave you hanging. But there was a problem. 
And we find this in chapter 4. Because see, now we're taking the focus off of Ruth. And the focus is on Naomi. Ruth had no near kinsman. Naomi had the near kinsman. And she is only there because of Ruth, because of Naomi. Now it focuses back to Naomi in this picture. And uh, old Boaz goes down in chapter 4 in the gate. And... Uh, Let's read verse 1. 4 and 1. Then went Boaz up to the gate. Yes. And set him down there. Yes. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came yeah. by. Yes. Unto whom he said, Oh, yeah. such a one, turn aside. But there was a kinsman that was closer to Naomi. Was not closer to Ruth. But was closer to Naomi. And he's got the privilege... So said, they are, they're going through this, they're going through this transaction. And in this transaction that they're going through, uh, I imagine their fourth season, old Boaz's heart sinks. Because this guy says, well, yeah, I'll pay the price for Naomi. Sure, yeah, I'll redeem her. She can live at my house. Yeah, I'll redeem her. Then Boaz in verse 5 pulls out his secret weapon. And what does he say? Then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi... Thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moab. Oh, yeah. when you buy Naomi, it's a package deal. You can't get Naomi without getting Ruth. Amen. And you know what he says? Ruth the Moabitess. <laughs> Brother, that guy is... To raise up a name. For that. And you know, he said, boy, I, you know, if I do that, my own inheritance will be mine. He said, well, if this, Brother Epley, if this is a picture, then who in the world could this other kinsman be? I'll tell you who the first kinsman was. The first kinsman was the law. That's, good. That's who the first kinsman was. It was the law. And the law was all right for those that were under the law. But that law could not purchase unto the Lord a Gentile wife. All the law could take care of was those that were under the law. But when you talk about bringing a Gentile in and making them not only the same, but you're making them above when you're putting them as your wife. Now, Brother Cotton may love his daughter-in-law. And he may love his sister, and he may love the other women in his in his in his in his life, but he's not going to love them like there's a special love that a man has for his wife. Amen. And there's a position she feels that mama don't feel, that his sisters don't feel, that none of the other ladies in his life that he loves feel. It's a special position that she feels. And this guy says, uh-uh, that Moabitess ain't going to fill that position for me. And she said, well, he says, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. And then uh, verse uh, 8 through 10. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, Yes. Buy it for thee. Buy it for thee. So he drew off his Boy, ain't you lucky your toes ain't sticking out. You're glad you put your good socks on today, didn't you? 
So he pulls that guy's shoe off. <laughs> and he throws the shoe over his shoulder. And the old guy, they weren't wearing socks back then. And the old guy's got his old grimy, <laughs> nasty looking feet hanging out there. And he showed in front of everybody. When he took this shoe off and throwed it, you know, he showed everybody, you know, what does it say? Oh, I have said unto the elders. Yes. And unto all the people. Yes. You are witnesses this day. You are witnesses this day. That I have bought all that was Elimelech. I have bought all. You know what that was? That was debt. That wasn't a big farmhouse with, 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 with big pillars in front. That was debt. He bought all of Emelech's debt. He bought his mortgages. That means he had to pay off. That means he had to pay off everything that Emelech owed. Emelech had to leave there because he owed so much they couldn't afford no bread. He said, I'm going to pay off everything Emelech. You know what Calvary says? I, I paid it all. I paid for David's sin. I paid for Abraham's line. I paid for Job's fear. I paid for Jacob's failure. Paid it all. Paid it all. That I bought, I bought all of Emelech's debt, and in this deal. Yes. And all that was Chilion, yeah. Chilion, yeah. of the hand of Naomi. Yes. Moreover, Ruth and Moabitus. Yeah, but in this deal, I want everybody to know in this contract what I've done. I've done what? Have I purchased to be my wife? <laughs> I have purchased to be my wife. Yes. To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Yes. That the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. Yes, yes. And from the gate of his place. Yes. Ye are witnesses this day. Keep on reading here a little bit. And here's the people that's witnessing this. Go ahead. And all the people that were in the gate. Yes, yes. And the elders. Said, yes, yes, yes. We are witnesses. Yes. The Lord make the woman that is coming to thine house. Yes. Like Rachel and like Leah. Yes. Which two did build the house of Israel. Yes. And do thou worthily in Ephraim. Yes. And be famous in Bethlehem. You're going to be famous in Bethlehem. Yes. Woo. Ruth put Bethlehem on the map. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo. God was testifying, a redeemer is going to come from Bethlehem. Oh, that's why Micah 5 and 2 says, Ephrata, even Bethlehem, thou art little among the, the hills and the thousands. But from thee shall come forth a governor whose going forth had been from old, everlasting. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. 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 This wedding, this event is going to make his name famous. That's right. Malachi 1 11 said, From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name shall be great among the Gentiles. Go ahead. He shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life. Woo! And a nourisher of thy old age. Yes. For thy daughter in law. Yes. Which loveth thee. Yeah. Which is better to thee than seven sons. Yeah. Yes, yes. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom. Yes. And became nurse unto it. Yes. The women, her neighbors, 
Yeah. He gave his name, saying, Yes. There is a son born to Naomi. Yeah. And called his name Obed. And called his name Obed. He's the father of Jesus. Huh? Do you know what the word Obed means in Hebrew? Do you? No, you're wrong. I figured you would be. Praise the Lord. Do you know what the word Obed means? The word Obed means worship. The word Obed means worship. This union, you know what this union produced? It produced worship. And then Obed gave birth to Jesse. You know what the word Jesse, the name Jesse means? It means gift. Gift. Worship produces the gift. Yes, hallelujah. And then the father of David, and the word, name David means beloved. From this, from this union came worship, gift, and the beloved. Are you glad for this wonderful romance of redemption? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, no accident that you're here. It was God's divine plan. Man, if you was to start going into the chemistry of everybody, the blood chemistry, you got folks that are got German and Irish and Polish and, and, and who knows? I doubt if there's anybody got any Jews blood in here. Might. But here we are. Here we are. Them Jews look at us today and we're, when they think of us, we're that Moabitish woman. You know, God had said that the Moabite will not enter the congregation of the Lord. For all that generation. See, that was all that, that law could do, Brother Samuel. It couldn't, it couldn't bring them into the congregation of the Lord. But love and marriage done what the law could not do. Oh, God so loved. God so loved. God so loved. God so loved. And now he's married us. And we're his wife. As his wife, you have his love, and you know his secrets. And you have his attention, and you have his care, and you have his protection. Because you're under his skirt. Oh, I'm so glad that he's redeemed us. Why don't you raise your hands. Thank him for redemption in the blood. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Won't you sing?